if you really love a thing, it, it's it's the place for you. It, it's, if, if you find a, a, a game or a subject stimulating to your soul, then it's for you. And don't listen to the little voice in your head that says, oh, well, I'm not as good as that person. Like, just don't, that, that doesn't matter. I wanted to ask you now, Louis, if that's okay, for your advice for any girls or young women or the parents of young girls watching this, because you've had phenomenal success in poker. You've made a huge impact in STEM, which are traditionally male-dominated fields, right? And we don't need to go into the reasons mm -hmm. of what that is, but you've blazed a trail in, in, in both poker and these, these fields. What are the biggest obstacles you, you, you've had to overcome and how have you managed to make such a big impact in, in a way that is, is benefiting people all over the world? Hmm. Um, for me personally, I think a lot of my biggest obstacles in poker were kind of independent of my, of my sex, but more of my personality type is that I, again, I've always looked for maximum efficiency in doing something so like what's the fastest way i can get known as a poker player mm -hmm. uh and win at a thing uh win at a tournament and that didn't always correlate with doing like the hard grunt work of of research and learning i mean uh, you know don't get me wrong I, I did plenty of training but i could have done more training and i think they got a point where i felt like i was good enough to win what i needed and 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 sort of was stopped as, you know, I sort of started seeing poker as a means to an end, as opposed to like like playing for the love of the game itself, um, and that almost certainly like hurt my not only my results but also like how I actually felt about myself playing. Um, so, arguably, that was one of my um, biggest obstacles was kind of like my own. I don't want to say laziness, but it's something adjacent to that, and also my own hubris and being like, "Oh, I I know enough to be good enough, good enough at this." Um, and then, but that's 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 a fairly unusual thing, I think. I would say, you know, it, from a, a more general answer that I think would be useful for for women uh, or girls listening to this is, I would say, women do struggle with imposter syndrome on average far more than men, um, and uh so on average pay attention to that and like notice when you are like giving yourself negative self-talk and just be like okay that's just my that's my whatever it is my biology or something telling me like oh this is not quite the place for you if you really love a thing it, it's it's the place for you it, it's if, if you find a, a a game or a subject stimulating to your soul then it's for you and don't listen to the little voice in your head that says oh well I'm not as good as that person like just don't, that, that doesn't matter um and even throughout my bravado years which <laughs> I had uh I still would sometimes have imposter syndrome as well um that's how powerful it is and that's not to say there aren't men with it as well plenty of men struggle with it but it's again it tends to code more onto females than than males are you someone who's always thrived in high pressure situations because the thought of being at a final table absolutely fills me with abject horror but, how, you know, are you, are you someone who thrived in that kind of environment or did you have to deploy some strategies to to safeguard your mental health and, and your well-being whilst in whilst in there? Oh, no, I would get incredibly nervous. Um, you know, when I won a big tournament in Italy, I really threw up on the way to the, you know, walking to the casino that morning. I had to stop like multiple times. It's dry heave. I was so, so nervous. Um, but once I actually sat down and started playing, the nerves just kind of, you know, you get into you get into the flow state or whatever. Um, yeah, it, I, I I mean, meditating just is a really powerful tool. Um, I didn't have like a specific meditation practice necessary that I would always follow, but um, I like having a mantra that I would repeat to myself. Um, one around like focusing on process as opposed to results. You know, if I develop a, a process that I believe in that I know is logical and sound and brings my bet my a game then the results will take care of themselves something like that just reminding focus on the process focus on the process that's the only thing you can control you can't control what other people do and you can't control what the cards do just focus on your own process and grade yourself on that um that would always help getting some exercise that morning just a little bit you know if it's just sprinting down the road and back you know, just something to like burn off that excess energy um and um 
sounds strange, but like trying to keep in the back of your mind, I'm here to have fun. Like try and approach it with a playfulness, a lighthearted playfulness. Um, I, I found worked best for me personally. Um, the tournament you mentioned yeah. where you won in Italy, where you were you were from nowhere, right? Out of a huge field, you won the tournament. Um, I'm not sure we've got time to talk about the, the fact you knew you were going to win that tournament, right? Or, or maybe we have, but but also I'd love it if you could give a little bit of background to to maybe I'm surprised you were dry heaving when you knew you were going to win. But then secondly, you were thrust. I, I mean, I didn't know I was going to win. I, I, I All I can say is I had like a, a funny voice in my head that before, you know, five days prior that was like, you're going to win this tournament. I was like, okay, cool. Like a little, sounded like my own, you know, like a thought basically of some kind. Um, that definitely gave like a, I sort of it smoothed out my like anxiety but I still didn't I, I can't say I felt like I knew you um because like that would be insane right <laughs> um uh I don't know it, it yeah it did you play did it was, you play, it was definitely did you play significantly different did you deviate from how you'd normally play after that were you taking more risks I'm really interested in how mm. that internal voice it affected you or maybe it didn't I don't know well one thing it did you know it, it did do for a while was that if I then went to play a tournament I would listen out to hear if I heard that voice and I never heard it again and then you know I I didn't win that many like win big things I mean I won a few things but I didn't have like a win of that scale ever again in, in my professional career um and I, so I don't know whether that was actually, you know, on net, it might've been a negative thing. Cause it's like, I'm like, well, I didn't hear the voice. So I'm not going to win it, you know? And that's mm -hmm. kind of self-defeating. That's not, that's not a healthy mindset, right? You you want to be, um, you, you want to know there's a possibility. I mean, I, I can't say, I, it, it wasn't like I took it that seriously. And like, frankly, I, you know, it, I only ever remember this when someone brings it up. It, it's not, it wasn't like it was always in the back of my mind, but um, yeah, it, 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 I definitely did pay attention to it sometimes, but there were some, some there were some days though where I feel like you know what, I'm feeling good today. I think I'm going to do well, and like more often than not, I would have like uh, some kind of decent result. Um, yeah. Were you ready for the, the the spotlight? Because winning that tournament, you were subjected to the kind of publicity that that a guy wouldn't have got. Right? You on you, you made the news pages for sure. Were you, how did you deal with that sudden, that rise to suddenly every single move, your next performance being scrutinized? You were under the microscope in a way that wouldn't have happened for a man. Were you ready for that? And how did you deal with it? Um, I mean, whether I was ready for it is another question, but did I want it? Yes. No, I was definitely hungry for uh, attention and fame. Um, and I, you know, I, I certainly reveled in it. Let's put it that way. Uh, was I actually mentally ready for it? Probably not. I, I definitely, it, it was definitely a chaotic period of my life. Um, and I, I can't, I can't say it was actually the happiest period either. Like I, I, I wasn't like, I wasn't making particularly good decisions in like my personal life very often. Um, I, 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 I definitely still had a bunch of insecurities that I hadn't worked through. Um, that in many ways were like amplified by the you know the fact that I was under the spotlight and having like perhaps unrealistic expectations on myself um, and of the world. Uh, so yeah, it, I wouldn't change it for anything because um, I'm very happy with where I am now. But uh, yeah, it was it 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 was definitely a double edged sword.